So um, we're going to be talking about the proposed organized waste hauling and recycling system that is going to be before city council um, on June 15th. And I'm um, going to start just kind of giving a, a broad overview. Um, so our current system that we have in our VAT is an unorganized or commonly referred to as an open market system. And uh, the city directs residents who are in non-HOA neighborhoods to a list of seven haulers that are currently posted on their website. And that's all the city's involvement at that point. And then every individual homeowner needs to find their own waste hauler or they could choose not to have any hauler. Um, and obviously then they have to figure out how they're gonna dispose of their waste on their own. Um, and um, the Arvada Sustainability Advisory Committee um, has been working and studying this system and all the other systems that, that are available to us out there in other communities. Um, and we really firmly believe that our current system is, is unfair, it's inefficient, and it's actually cost costly to both the city and to residents. Um, <clears throat> so for example, a, a neighborhood street could have seven or more trucks um, traveling on it per week. Uh, that creates road damage, truck noise, air pollution, and also threats to neighborhood safety. So this, as I said, is inefficient and it results in higher costs to our residents um, who we have found are paying more than HOAs and neighboring communities who have organized waste hauling systems. Residents also have to pay more to get recycling services and that really discourages then residents from participating in recycling. And you can see that um, on the slide that we show a cost into the current system for individual homes between $20 and $29 a month for both trash and recycling. And that's based off of a survey that we did um, as the committee a couple of years ago. And then most recently, we checked it by calling all of the haulers um, that provide service and asking them what they would charge. And so those numbers are accurate based on that last call we made. Um, and, and then we'll get into more details about the proposed system on the right, but we're looking at a price range, and I'll explain a little bit more why it's a price range and not one set price, uh, between $11.50 and $19.90 a month under the proposed system or the organized waste hauling system. Um, so one other thing that's important to note is that under the current system, the uh, city hat for a number of years now has been unable to find uh, contractors to provide some popular services that used to they used to be able to contract out now can no longer and that's to do with bulky item collection and yard debris collection and we know these are popular because survey after survey the community has done the city has done uh, people have responded that they want those to be brought back and be more robust even um, and so uh, this this proposed system would uh, bring those back um, and we would actually have two bulky item collections a year and then four yard debris collections a year. Um, and, you know, the other point to make is that this is going to uh, greatly reduce the number of trucks on our neighborhood roads. So that's going to re will reduce the cost to many residents and then re increase recycling um, by providing it to every home and provide additional services, the ones that I mentioned. Um, additionally, the city will now have the ability to address poor customer service by actually fining the contracted company for violations and then could end the contract at any time if they feel like this, the contractor is not upholding to the agreements of the contract. And that I think is a really important point as well because under our current system, the city has no recourse for any hauler that leaves a resident high and dry or, you know, has really poor service. Um, and there's no fines, no penalties, and so really the individual homeowner has no recourse and the city cannot help them. So this is just a quick overview of kind of our journey to where we are today with this. Um, for most of 2018, the Sustainability Advisory Committee did the research that I mentioned, did a lot of outreach and meeting with community groups um, and, and and actually um, going to a lot of events and talking to community members and getting their input. And then we provided the city council with a presentation during a workshop in December of 2018 that summarized those findings from that outreach and summarized our research and looking at what 
our options could be to improve our waste hauling system. And, and it all was really initiated by wanting to improve our recycling rate. So I'll get to some more detail about that in a minute. Um, and so then that led to council deciding at a retreat that they wanted to direct staff to pursue and investigate this further. Um, and then they've had some workshops to, to, with staff as they prevented what, presented what staff was finding. And then from February to May of 2019, um, there was really the initiation of the city doing outreach to residents about this. So there was a survey on Speak Up Arvada. Um, they provided several documents that summarize some of the questions they were getting from residents and answers and started meeting with haulers to discuss what um, options could be pursued by the city to make a change. Um, and so then there was a presentation again to council by staff of those findings. And then finally, in May of 2019, a year ago, the RFP was put out to request for proposal, asking haulers to put in a bid um, and a response. And that RFP had lots of options in it. So I know sometimes people ask, well, you know, what about doing districts? So different parts of the city have a different hauler so we could, you know, keep more haulers involved and just and not do just one as a single hauler. Or people were asking about the smaller haulers and, you know, how they could participate. And that RFP really allowed many of those options. It allowed a small hauler to um, just bid on one part of the city um, or be a subcontractor for a larger hauler. Maybe they would take on recycling while the larger hauler did the trash. Um, but the end result is we only got four offers from that process and they were all the large, four large haulers. So the smaller haulers didn't bid at all, even though we had given them several options to consider. Um, so council uh, reviewed those RFPs and, and then talked about going to um, the ballot because that was an election year for city council in 2019 in, in November. Um, Three of the seven council seats, including the mayor, were up for re-election. And so there was a lot of political pressure to feel like, let's not make this decision. Let's have uh, the voters decide. Um, and Lakewood was doing the same thing um, at the, the same time. And so um, their staff was instructed at that point in July of last year to draft a ballot question for residents to vote on. Um, and then in August, which was kind of the deadline for council to, um, to decide what to do about the ballot question and, and what the language would be, um, they had a council meeting and uh, through lots of test public testimony, uh, and myself included and um, others, council decided unanimously not to put it on the ballot. And the reasoning was, when you're in an RFP process, um, you can't divulge the information that the city has received from the proposals that have been submitted until you select a, a winner, a, a, um, uh, um, someone that you want to go with with the contract. And so the struggle that um, council had was, well, they realized we can't make this decision because we don't have all the information. How do we expect residents to make this decision as well? And so that was the argument we presented and they, they uh, agreed. And so it was um, turned down the idea of putting it on a ballot. And, um, and so they then instructed staff to continue to discuss um, with the haulers and to um, start negotiating uh, some good prices, best prices and services. So that happened um, throughout the fall. And then in December of last year, um, council had an executive session in which they got updates from staff on how those negotiations were going. And, um, and then finally in March, um, there was a draft ordinance that was presented to council and a draft contract with the selected hauler. Um, so that kind of brings up to where we are now. Um, I mean, there were some dates set back in March and April to go through, a, a make a decision and because of COVID-19 it got pushed back. So, so these are really the, the current dates. Um, and so in May, um, on May 4th, city council had a first reading. And so that's where they introduced the draft ordinance, um, and, 
and then set a time frame for when they're going to have the second reading. And the second reading is really the time of debate for public comment and then the actual vote on, on what they're going to do in regards to uh, the ordinance and the contract. Um, on May 11th, they had another city council workshop where they really got into the details of the ordinance and, and the contract and had a public discussion about that. Last week, um, city staff offered a Zoom public forum that went for two and a half hours. I think they had, if I heard right, they had over 70 people that submitted questions, um, or at least 70 questions. I'm not sure on the number of people. Um, and so they spent those two and a half hours answering those questions. It was very thorough. And then um, uh, next week, um, they're setting up in-person engagement. Um, and so basically it's like by appointment, you can sign up and either meet virtually or in person with the staff to ask further questions. So the staff has uh, worked very hard to provide as much opportunity for, and as you can see, as I quickly went over, over the past really three years, city staff and the sustainability committee have done a huge amount of effort in public engagement and outreach to educate the public about um, this process and what we're considering. Um, and so finally then on June 15th, uh, the next city council meeting here um, in about a week and a half um, will be the public hearing and then the vote, the second reading. Any questions so far about kind of the process before I get into the specifics of the ordinance and the contract? I'm just curious how, what's the, um, what's the temperature of the city council on this? Great question. Um, we have four votes in favor and three opposed. Um, and it was, okay. it, it, yeah. and we'll talk a little bit more at the end about that as well, but yes, that's, Good question. Um, so the uh, um, draft ordinance, so again, there's two pieces. There's the ordinance and the contract. So I'm gonna talk about each separately. First, the ordinance um, would allow the city to contract with the city hauler. So we have to first establish in city code that the city can do this. And under state statute, it allows them to do that um, for waste services for residential homes. We cannot include multifamily complexes with eight or more units. Um, and that is because uh, in the state of Colorado, eight or more units is considered a commercial property. And the state only allows cities to contract with residential for residential service and not commercial. So businesses cannot participate in this service and neither can multifamily for that reason because of state law. Um, and then HOAs, um, um, have, and we'll get into more details, and this gets to your question, Melissa, have the option to opt in. Um, but, and now as a choice, um, we could, under state law, require HOAs to participate, and there are some cities that do that, and some actually now, like the city of Lafayette, is, is, is considering doing that soon. Um, but um, we felt like, you know, most of our HOAs already have uh, some sort of similar single hall or smaller scale system, and uh, we knew that there would be probably a lot of pushback from HOAs if they were required to participate right away. Um, and so we felt like it made most sense since they're already kind of participating in that kind of system um, to allow them to continue to do that and to opt in if they chose. Um, so the so oh, yes. question. Can, can, mult, can the multifamily complexes and businesses opt in or is that just not an option? We just can't force them or they can't do it at all? They can't do it at all. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. I, I had the same question. Yeah, it's commercial property. Because it's designated as commercial property, it cannot be serviced by the city or in a city contract. Um, the, uh, so the ordinance will allow city council to set the fees for the waste service, just like they do for other fees like wastewater and, and water service. Um, and like I said, it allows the HOAs to join. Um, and then it will require HOAs to join that are, that are new if they newly form after December uh, of this year. So new HOAs would be required to join automatically. Um, and then it requires all waste haulers, um, regardless, and they can do this at least, if they're servicing commercial or residential, they will be required to be licensed with the city. And that's really huge 
because again, you know, if, if a hauler is doing something illegally and there's, you know, something that's found out about that, the city currently has no repercussions. And so under this ordinance, we'll say, no, you need to be licensed and then we can revoke your license if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Um, and so that, that's, that's a pretty important piece too. And that does apply for both commercial and residential. Um, and then it will require all waste haulers servicing residents to provide recycling. Um, and that is so if they are providing service for an HOA and they're not currently providing recycling, they will be required to do so with this ordinance. Um, and then we'll also get into kind of the specifics in a minute about residents that are non-HOAs that choose to opt out and go with another hauler because they're allowed to do that under state law. Um, it would require those haulers also to provide recycling, which they currently may not do. Um, and then this last piece, which is also important because a lot of people, you know, are concerned about where their recycling is going um, when they set it out and is the hauler really taking it to be recycled. And so this ordinance would require that this, if, a, if a resident puts it out to be recycled, it must be recycled. Um, and I know there's lots of questions about that, so we may get into that a little bit too. Um, so in the contract, the uh, selected haulers are public services. Um, the contract term is for five years, and um, there is the opportunity to then add two additional one-year renewals onto that. And then after that seven years, that total seven years, then it would have to go back out for a new bid, a new RFP, and any hauler could ap apply again. Um, but and, you know, that's not like permanent, let's say in year two, the city is not happy with the Republic, they could end that contract and put out an RFP then. Um, so there is, you know, that opportunity, but currently the contract is set for five and then additional one year renewals. Um, it would provide weekly collection of trash and bi-weekly collection of recycling. And that recycling is bundled in and we'll talk about the prices in a minute. So you don't pay extra, you don't have to subscribe to the recycling in addition. It, we call it bundled in like, you know, they bundle cable and telephone and stuff. I think they still do that. Um, so that's the idea is that your trash and recycling are bundled together. And then um, there is two per year bulky item drop off events. Um, and we'll get into the details of that to as well as the yard debris drop off events. Um, and this last one's really important. The prices are locked in for the first two years. Afterwards, they can increase with inflation, but not more than 3%. And they also have to um, prove that the increase matches what the national uh, index is for water, sewer, and trash. So there's this national index that shows how much the costs are increasing. And so they have to prove to the city that if they're requesting a price increase, that it has to match what's happening nationally with that index. And, you know, that's also the case if the city doesn't like what the offer is, the, the you know, Republic says, we need to, after year two, we need to increase it to, to the X amount. And the city says, nope, we're not going to accept that. Then they would either negotiate or in the contract and put out an RFP to look for somebody else. So again, there's, there's those options. They're not locked into Republic and Republic's going to jack up the prices and there's nothing the city can do. The city has lots of control over this. And that's, I think, an important point because I people say, oh, this is just a monopoly the Republic's going to have. It's like, no, in a monopoly, the one company that has a monopoly has control of the pricing. The city has control of the pricing because it's a contract the city has with a, a one hauler. And so the city is the, you know, the city council is the one who approves the prices, not Republic. Um, so what is the new service going to look like? Um, as we said, we really feel most people are going to experience more services at a lower cost. Um, hopefully it will cook, kick in in May, 2021. We do need a lot of lead up time for the contract to be finalized for Republic to purchase the trucks that they're going to need, which takes a long time to get new trucks, hire the new drivers, um, and get the carts. And so all of that's going to take time. So we need at least till May 2021. Because of COVID, that may be pushed back a couple months, um, but that's the goal. And, um, and then you can see here, everyone gets the, the 96 gallon recycling automatically. And then you get to choose your size trash can for level of service. And this is really um, something that no other, you know, under the current system, no one provides. 
So this is something new. And, and that's something that I think is really important about this is that you get a choice in what service you get and what level of service. Um, and you really are paying for what you use. And so it's much more fair because people that, you know, put out very little trash right now under the current system are paying just as much you put out 10 bags, you know? And so um, that is not fair because you could say we're subsidizing other people to be wasteful when we choose and our, you know, our, under our household, we don't do that. So this is a much more fair system. You pay for what you use, just like water, just like electricity, all those other utilities that we have. Um, so that's what this new system will provide. And you can see the pricing there. And those prices, that's per month, um, those prices will um, include everything else. That includes the recycling, that includes all the extra services, yard debris, the large item drop-off. Um, so all of that is included in that price. Um, and the only additional price you might see is if you want someone to actually come to your home and pick up a, you know, a, a refrigerator or a couch for bulky item, then you pay $15 per item. And that's a really great deal because I called around, you know, to like um, 1-800-GOT-JUNK. And I said, how much would you charge if you came to pick up my, my sofa or refrigerator? And they're starting about $180 is what they would charge to come up and pick something like that up. So again, this is a really great deal for, for that, those extra services. So quick question, what happens if, um, you know, like I get my 96 gallon trash can and I put it out, but it's also Christmas. So I have two extra bags. Right. How does that? So you would, you would get a, uh, you need to go to city hall and purchase a tag for your bags. And um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten. I'll have to go back to the, F the FAQ sheet has the details on what those are. I want to say it's like, two dollars a bag i think or something like that so you would you would pay extra for that now um that's only offered to people that are maxed out at the 96 gallon trash can so if you subscribe for a lower size trash can and christmas comes and you think oh i need more capacity you are allowed one free change out during the year so you would say hey i want to go to a 96 it's december give me a 96 um, and then later on in the year, if you say, well, I want to go back to my smaller trash can, I, and again, I'm sorry, I, I should know this. I think the fee is like $15 to then change your trash can again at that point. So you get one free change and then every additional is like $15. Um, and the, then the bags is another way to go, but you have to be at your 96 gallon already before you can do the bags. What's, so, well, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not right. That's not right. I have that wrong. The bags, you don't have to be at the 96. It's if you want another trash can, if you want another 96 gallon, you have to already be at the 96 to start with. And, and that comes at um, about $5 more a month if you want another 96 gallon trash can. So that's important because let's, you know, you go back to the, let me go back to the slide here. The first one right here. People are paying between currently $20 to $29 now per month. And they say, oh, I get a 96-gallon trash can, a 96-gallon recycling. So if you go to then the new system and you're at $19.90 or $20 if you do the 96-gallon and you want to then get another 96-gallon, then you're paying $25. You're still competitive to what the current pricing is. So, you know, and you get, again, more service. So it's still a huge benefit um, compared to what folks are getting now. So I want to I want to get this clear, Randy. You can yeah. get, if you wanted a second 96 gallon, it would only cost you $5? A month a, more. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Okay. And if you want another recycling, so say you want two recycling, Right. Uh, it's four dollars more a month for another 96 gallon recycling bin. Okay, and that's that's an estimated price. They haven't finalized it. They said it'll be five uh, around five dollars, around four dollars. Is what they're telling you. So, and, and then, you won't get, and you won't be allowed to put out any additional bags or anything. Everything has to be in the garbage receptacle. Correct. And like I said, if you want an additional bag, you need to 
pay for the tag to put on the bag or they won't pick it up. And then if you do those second cans, is there, um, there could be a charge, not, I mean, for the service we talked about, but for the actual second can, there might be, they might, will they charge you for that? No, it's just the, the service per month, the additional just service the, per month. Okay. Just, and do you have to use their can? You have to use their receptacles, obviously. Yes, and that's because they have automated trucks, and so they, you know, yes. as you can see in this picture, the arm picks it up, and so you, they need to have that part. Okay, so questions about what if you don't want to participate in the program? So again, I said Colorado law says that you have a right to choose your own waste and recycling hauler. Um, so residents who choose to select their own hauler would, would be charged a minimum service fee. Now, these fees are going to be added to your um, wastewater and water bill that you get from the city, because that's the only bill you get. The electricity is separate through Excel for most residents. So this would be added on to your current city utility bill that you get from the city. And so residents who decide to opt out would be charged $5.13 a month. Um, and <coughs> which there's been a lot of discussion about this and the the best way to explain it is first of all the two item bulky item pickups that people anybody can participate in is something that everyone has access to so we're asking you to contribute something to that as well as the leaf drop off um so those are the two things that um that you know would be part of your 513 a month um, minimum service fee um now this is where people get really kind of been out of shape, is that um, HOA residents are all going to be charged, individual homes, not the HOA, but the individual homes will be charged 88 cents a month. Um, and that's if they, if the HOA says we're not going to opt in right now, right? So we're going to, we're going to keep our current system, then the city will charge each HOA home 88 cents a month on their water sewer bill. Um, and the reason, because a lot of people ask, well, why are HOAs so much lower than, than the non-HOAs on this service? The reason is because the, the non-HOA homes right now under the open market system are causing all of these problems that we talked about. Road damage, very expensive road maintenance problems, air pollution, noise, all these disruptions. And so when we go to Republic and say, we want to contract with you to provide a service for the whole city, Republic has to calculate what that's going to cost them for all those new trucks and new employees. And they come up with a cost and they say that we need to charge this and we're going to break it down per home. And we know that there's this option to opt out. Well, to reduce their risk of knowing how many, of not knowing how many homes are going to opt out, they need to charge this minimum service fee. Um, so that they can keep the price low for everybody and provide all of these services. Um, and so that's the benefit to the non-HOA homes, whether they choose to opt in or not, is that we now have one company servicing the whole city, providing these benefits and reducing the number of trucks on the road and, and creating better quality of life. Um, HOAs are already subscribing to that. They already have a single hauler. So they only have one truck on their street. They've reduced the noise. They've reduced, they've done all of that and provided the community that benefit. So the idea is that the HOAs are already paying into that benefit now with their current program. And so that's why the 88 cents is lower because it's really just tacking on the cost of the leaf drop off and the bulky item. How did I do at explaining that? So, um, if our that's only if you opt out correct because otherwise you're just paying for the service correct that's right so yeah if, so a non right, if, so a non hi katie so a non-hoa home coming you know when we lead up to the transition on in may 2021 or june or july of that that year um everybody's going to decide am i going to opt in and choose my size of trash can and and here we go. Um, and if you say, no, I want to opt out, then you're going to get charged at 513 a month. But if you choose a trash can and you say, I'm going to be part of the program, then you only get charged that price. Your program. Yeah. Your program fees. Got it. Right. Okay. So that's how that works.
Any other questions? I bet there was a lot of discussion on that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Other Randy, uh, I, I feel bad asking you these questions because I wasn't able to participate in the city question and answer, but no, no. Um, uh, okay, let's say, okay, we have a fairly busy yard with little yard debris maybe every week during the summer. Do we just include that in? We don't have to separate it. No. So we, we really wanted to have com curbside compost as part of this program. Um, and that is, you know, what other cities um, like Lafayette, Louisville, Boulder. Boulder, though, is not, I don't want people to compare this to Boulder because they've got a very different system that's very expensive. Um, but they do um, have composting as part of their service. So you get a three bin service, right? A recycling trash and compost. We wanted that. But right now, the way the market is, um, the cost for compost is so expensive that right. it would just dra jack up our prices to make it where nobody would want, and we would get such resistance for making this change. And we really wanted these prices to be competitive with what people are currently paying. Um, now, all of that said, that doesn't mean that down the road we can't add compost, curbside compost, to the program in the future when those prices come down. And we think there's going to be some opportunities for those prices to come down to have something that's more local, a more local uh, composting facility or transfer station that would lower those costs. Um, so I think there is that opportunity. But, you know, for, for a lot of folks that really want composting or disappointed, you know, I have to tell them, well, the only way we're going to get there is we have to take this first big step because we won't get curbside composting if we haven't done this. So, so that's, that's an important point, even though this does not provide it right now. Right. Um, now, the, now, the yard waste that you take to the drop-off that happens twice in the fall and once in the spring, um, that will be composted. So if you are able to, you know, take it, um, then it, can be, it will be composted. But if you can't right. take it and you need to put it in the trash as part of your weekly pickup, then it won't be composted. It'll go to the landfill. Right. No, we always take our leaves down to the city site. Yeah. Okay, but good question. Hi, Katie. Hi, sorry, I had a problem with the link I got oh, the first time around. I'm so sorry. I've been tracking down, tra hunting down the link, thanks to Tim and Deb and Kyle. Oh, my. Well, I'm glad you made it. Oh, I'm sorry to miss the first half hour. 40 minutes. Well, I'll, I'll provide all of this to you so you can see it. Okay, so it's important to talk about customer service, and I've talked a little bit about this already. Um, that under the new contract, they're going to be required to do a number of things that currently under our current system, the city can't do and individual homeowners can't do. Um, so they're going to be required to provide a, a dedicated customer service um, representative, and that person must be local. So whenever you call um, between uh, you know, 9 and 5 on the weekday, you're going to get someone here in the Denver metro area. Um, you're not going to be going someplace national um, on that call, and that's really important. Um, after hours, you would go to a national voice message that would then get redirected to that local service person. Um, and they are uh, guaranteeing a 99.9% .9 accuracy rate. So, so that means that if they miss on a given day more homes than, you know, 0.1%, of the homes, then they're going to have some serious fines they're going to have to pay to the city. Um, and, and then there's a number of quality standards that are in the contract. And so, you know, it ranges from, I'm not going to go into all the details, but if you want it, I'm happy to share it. But, you know, cleaning up spilled materials, there's, you know, a fine for that. Per, it's like $1,000 per incident, leakage from vehicles. And a lot of people complain about trash trucks leaking, you know, liquid on their street and they don't know what it is and trying to get that cleaned up. So there's going to be fines for that. Um, failure to report or correct missed pickups is $100 each incident. Um, and then um, someone asked on the, on the uh, city's presentation about um, responsibility of damaged property. And that's another big thing that they're going to be liable for and have to uh, fix immediately. So if they damage any personal property, that's in the contract. Um, failure to respond within 24 hours of customer calls is $50 per incident. 
Um, and then there's charges they don't maintain their staff during office hours and, and failure to report any non-compliance. There's, so there's a lot of good um, parameters in there to make sure that we have good quality service, which I know people are asking about. So this is just a quick overview of the benefits, and then I'm going to go into kind of detail of, um, about, about each one. But we really firmly believe that this is going to help increase our recycling in the city. They say we're going to have fewer trucks, less road damage, um, decrease noise nuisance and air pollution, which we're hearing a lot of people complain about now that they're at home more under COVID-19 stuff. Um, increasing safety for pedestrian children and pets and providing additional services and lowering costs. So kind of diving these into a little deeper, um, our recycling rate is currently 13% now. To clarify, that is that means 13% of our waste is recycled. Not 13% of the population is participating, but 13% of our waste is being recycled. The national average is, is 35%. Um, and really the biggest barrier to recycling in Arvada is a lack of convenience. Um, the survey that was done in 2011 found that 60% of our residents don't have a curbside recycling bin. And that really gets, that reflects on the fact of the inefficiency of the system in that people are paying so much for their trash and they say, well, I want recycling. And they're like, well, that means I got to send another truck out to your home. So I'm going to charge you another $10, $15. And be like, I can't afford that. So they don't opt into the program. Um, and that's really what this saves by changing to a single hauler is that we are, you know, the trucks are servicing every single home on your street. And that then has an efficiency and economy of scale that lowers the cost of that truck going to all of your homes. So they're not just jumping over the city here and there. And so then everyone pays less and that cost is spread out through more homes. Um, and that is also why they can bundle in recycling and not charge you extra for that service as well. Um, and then let's see, um, you know, I talked about the fairness issue around uh, non-HOA homes. Um, you know, they really, that's the older part of the neighborhood, of the city, and those homes pay more than the newer part of the city in HOA. So there's really a, a, a fairness issue there that we're also trying to correct. Um, let's see, a lot of this I've talked about, but I think it's important to note that 70% of the United States is under some sort of organized waste hauling system. So we are really rare um, in our current system, and it's, it's something that is, is going out of style for good reason across the country because um, it's just so inefficient. Um, there's 100 communities in Colorado that contract with haulers, um, like what we're proposing, or the city provides its own hauling, like Denver has its own trucks, Longmont has its own trucks. Uh, but that's really not an option for a city like Arvada, the size of our city. That would just be too expensive and an investment for our city to buy our own trucks. Um, let's see. I think that's a um, good overview of, of the recycling piece. Uh, we talked about the need to reduce truck traffic. Um, we see that... Uh, each truck, a trash truck has the equivalent of 1,000 to 1,400 vehicles per day in terms of road damage that they cause. Um, the City of Fort Collins did a really good study a couple of years ago and estimated they would save about $170,000 a year if they changed to an organized waste hauling system um, because of that road damage. And our own research uh, that the city has done showed that we would see an 82% reduction in trash, tra trash truck traffic um, if we redo, if we change to an organized waste hauling. So that's, that's pretty significant. This is a map that a member of the Arvada Sustainability Advisory Committee drew of her own short street. It's a, a cul-de-sac or a dead end. And they have 14 homes and they see six haulers. And because a lot of them also get recycling, then that results in nine trucks per week go up and down this short street of 14 homes. Um, and there's the list of all the all the haulers that she sees. So that just you know brings drives that point home um, that it's just really inefficient. Um, and so then we're also um, you know seeing that we're expecting the benefit of decreasing noise, air pollution, um, and increasing the uh, safety um, in our neighborhoods. And so there's you know truck exhaust and noise. Um, <laughs> 
and you know really expecting that to to change um, with with the change in the system. And then you know we talked about this already a lot, but you know really expecting to have additional services with a lower cost and more options to lower your costs um, with that different size cart. Um, let's see. And we and we expect that you could save as much as sixty percent um, with this change. If you look at the maximum amount people are paying now and what they could could potentially save. So you know that all of that work that the sustainability committee has done over the past three years, um, we have found that there is strong support for this in the community. Despite right now we're hearing, of course, a lot of loud minority that are in opposition. Um, and, um, you know, in surveys that the city has done continually over the probably past 10 years, they found that more than 90% of our batons want more recycling options. They really value recycling and feel like we don't have enough services here in the city, um, to provide those uh, needs. Um, and then the last two, um, city surveys specifically asked residents about their support for a single hauler trash and recycling system, and 67% of our residents said that they somewhat or strongly supported it. So I think that's a really good, good number. Um, so I'm going to finish with kind of the next steps and then certainly take your guys' questions. Um, so, and I will, um, I will send you guys via email all of this, so you don't need to copy any of it down. Um, and I'm just making a quick note. Katie has joined us, so I think I have everybody's email. Um, and we can certainly, hopefully, Melissa, we can put this out to more people, too, that, that may want it. But um, so I'll send you the slide deck. I'll also send you all of, all of these links. But um, there, the city has great resources. I said their communication staff have done an awesome job. So the um, – let's see if I can get to my web browser. Okay. Yeah. Brandy? Yes. If, if before you go on to next steps, um, yes. I don't know if you already covered this, but one of the things that I mentioned in the letter that I submitted was that there's an aesthetic issue also that just in terms of the beauty of our neighborhoods and, and the smell. Would yeah. this mean different trash services? We have trash. I look like that grid that you showed. There are tr ah. There's trash out on the curb every day in my neighborhood. Exactly. So you have trash out every day, a different can. I mean, it's And then because I live on a hill and because everybody doesn't have the kind of trash can that yeah. lifts up to go on the truck, if it's a windy day and the trash has been collected but people aren't home yet from work, those trash cans and, lit and or lids go rolling down the street. Yeah. Um, I have to manu manipulate around them when I'm going out for a walk. I mean, it's just, it's unsightly. It affects the beauty of our neighborhoods and the beauty yeah, of our city. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And, um, you know, I hope that you can say that again and go into that detail um, for the 15th. Because um, I think that is something that maybe isn't being said as much as it should be about having a trash can or more out every day of the week. And it's like, you know, one day is enough. <laughs> and it's not even just lined up trash cans you know it's bags and boxes and and stuff because not everybody uses a consistent yeah. type of trash container that's right that's right oh great point um so this this is the um web page for the organized waste hauling that the city has done and I, I think they've done a really good job so you can the things here are very useful they have a great fact sheet that i direct you to um see if I can, I guess I'll just click on it here um, for you to see. And uh, da, 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 here it comes. There it is. So this is just a two-pager. So, um, you know, if you have the ability to print it out and share it with your neighbors, if you're talking about this, that would be great because I think they've done a very succinct way of capturing all the kind of detail that I went over. Um, and then they've also got, I'll go back, um, they've also got this great FAQ page, which really goes into a lot more detail. Um, and so you can, you know, answer some of those questions. Um, here's about changing your trash card. And so it is $15 per exchange. That was something I was trying to remember. The first time is free though. Um, and then it, and then the extra cart is it says is less than five dollars a month, and 
and the extra recycling card is less than four dollars a month so yeah you can see all of that here um, and it goes into the RFP process and how they selected the haulers you know just all these kind of questions that people have been asking about composting HOA questions um, and extra so you know if you want to take the time to look at that document that's great too and I again have that link for you um, let's see and then the other thing just to point to is that, um, well, I'll, I'll get back to that. Um, so I'll go back over here. Um, so that's the stuff that I just went over. Um, oh, and then there's a city survey on that page that I suggest if you've got the time, it's really quick to go and, and participate in that. Um, and then, um, you know, if you, if you want to take the time to contact city councilors, We've been telling everybody to email everyone, all the city councilors. It doesn't matter who your uh, district is, just email all of them because, you know, we're small enough that they will, they don't, they don't look at, well, is they my constituent or not? They just see, oh, you're an Arvada resident, and then that, you know, is important. So, um, and I put Lauren Simpson on here. She's new, and this goes back to the question that Melissa asked at the beginning about, um, how many votes we had and so katie this this was before you got on and i said there's seven council members and we have four votes right now to pass this which is what we need i'm um, just barely <laughs> wow. um and and lauren simpson is one of those four and she's the newest council member who's elected this last cycle um and she's um she's in a difficult district i mean she she won her race um and it was a tough race but her opponent is just going after her tooth and nail on this issue. Um, and, and he's, you know, I mean, he's calling her name. I mean, it's really nasty. Um, so she needs a lot of support. And so um, right now, I think if anyone wants to email a city councilor, it should be her and telling her this is the right decision for our community. And we really support you in, in, in doing this um, because she's the one we're concerned about. Um, how she might end up voting because of all the pressure that's being put on her. Um, and then if you've got questions that I can't answer, you can email the city and, and that's their link for that or their email address for that. Um, and then I really wanna just finish with what's gonna happen on the 15th and what we're doing. Um, so the sustainability committee has set a goal of having 50 people turn out for the 15th in favor. Um, we feel like that's something we can do that's doable and we probably can get more than 50. But what we're really asking people to do, and there's this Google link that I'll share is for people to sign up so we can really count people and know where we stand. Um, and so signing up with us to tell us, yes, I'm going to participate. And if I can, you know, if you've got other people that you think you can ask to participate to include that on our sheet. Um, and so we can keep a really good tally of that and a check in on where we stand. Um, and so that we're using that. Um, and then the, the city council is doing a hybrid. So you can either participate in person. Um, and so that's obviously something very new with COVID. Um, and that started the last city council meeting last Monday. Um, and so that's at 8101 Ralston Road at 6 p.m. Need to wear a mask. Um, they're only gonna let so many people in the city council chamber at a time. Once you testify, you can't stay, you have to leave for obvious reasons. Um, you know, it would be great if people would do that, but I totally understand people's comfort level. And if they don't feel comfortable doing that, I totally get that as well. Um, I will be there to be in person. And I know some of the other um, sustainability members will as well. Um, the other two options are to virtually testify. So it would be live and you would need to email Bruce, that's his email address before five on the 15th saying, I wanna testify virtually um, during the, the hearing. And, um, uh-oh, Lisa Lowe says we're trying to get on the meeting, but it's asking for a password. Um, Melissa, do you know what that password is? Melissa, you're on mute too. It didn't ask me for a password Sorry. at all. Yeah. If you have, if you have the direct link, I think you don't need the password. If you have, um, if you are just trying to find it and um, type in the numbers, you have to have the password. Yeah. All right. Are you Hold looking on. for that? Can you look for that and I'll text it to her. Um, 
So there's the virtual option, um, and then the, the, the last option, which a lot of people have been doing, um, which is effective as well, is to provide written comment in an email to Kristen, and she's the city clerk. You have to get in by five on June 15th, and you must, in your email to her, say, I want this read out loud. If you do not put that in your email, it will not get read. Um, and All so right. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. The nope. password is 630833. 630833. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, so those are the three options. And like I said, we really would like to have 50 people or more participate in either of those options on the 15th. And I'll also send you a link to a Google Doc. If you don't have access to Google Doc, I'm signed, happy to also send it to you in a Word Doc of some really short talking points that you can use um, in your testimony. So that I'm done with my presentation at 6.57 and happy to take more questions. Here's my, and here's my contact info if you want to reach out to me as well. Randy, thank you for hosting. Yeah, you bet. Thank you guys for, for participating. It's yeah, so nice to everybody who knows all the answers just at our fingertips. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had some, you had, you stumped me on a few. I was like, oh crap, I forgot that. I need to go look it up. <laughs> well, it was good information, Randy. Thank you. Yeah. And um, um, is that, is this email that I've been using to get in touch with you? The yes. Randy Mormon? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah, so I, I really hope you guys will consider um, participating in the 15th, however you choose, and, and letting us know on the Google Doc, or if you just want to email me, I can also put it in there so we can keep track. But um, it's a numbers game, so we've got to really show that there's a lot of support for this, to, especially to convince Lauren that this is the right thing to do with all the pressure she's getting. The other, the right. other, three, the other three are solid votes. Now... You know, I didn't talk about this a whole lot. I mentioned it briefly maybe at the beginning, but what, um, what the opposition wants to do is to get counsel not to vote on this and put it on the ballot this November. Um, and really the challenge with that is that we would be back in the same boat we were in last year when they were considering putting on the ballot because even though Republic is the chosen hauler and we know their prices and we have all the details of the services and the pricing, they have indicated that they cannot wait any longer on that. I mean, they've been negotiating that for a year now and then this would not start until May of 2021. And then those prices are held for two more years. So with the markets changing right now, they can't say we, we're gonna wait again and stick to these prices. Um, and so we do expect, and they've indicated this, that they would not hold those prices if it went to a ballot in November and wait, they could not wait that long. So we would have to put out another RFP and go through this whole process again, meaning that the ballot would not have the prices. It would not have the services. So again, that's information that people would not know how to vote on. And that's where we were a year ago when they considered putting it on the ballot. And, and you know, just the principle of it is that the city has never put a service like this on the ballot. You know, they haven't said, oh, we need to decide, you know, our water prices. And so we're going to go to the ballot. No, it's, it's something that the city provides and the city should make that decision and should really look out for what's the best for the whole community. And, yeah. and, I've, and I've already said, and I was quoted publicly in the paper last week about, you know, the fact that, you know, a large percentage of our voters live in HOAs and already have this. Um, and those that don't, you know, they might not get that benefit because the HOA people decided that they didn't like this. Is that fair, you know, <laughs> um, for them? Um, so anyway, those, those are, that's what's going on right now is they're really trying to push it to a ballot. And, and Randy? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, well, I, we, we do know. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just going to say that I responded to that in the letter, the comments that I sent them was that, you know, I've heard people are asking to have a vote because they feel like each person should be able to vote. And I said, 
that you do vote. You vote for your council representative. That's why it's called a representative system yep. of government. And, and those people that ran in the last election and won were very vocal about their position on this issue. <laughs> so we did have an election that had something to do with this issue. And I said, you know, it would be a waste of taxpayer dollars to go through that when we already have representative system of government. That's right. Um, you mentioned the four that are planning to vote and that Lawrence is getting a lot of pressure. What do you know about the other three that look like no votes? Oh, so the three that are no votes, the strongest is John Marriott. There's no way to change him. And he, he and T.O. Owens, T.O. Owens is the one who ran against Lauren Simpson and lost. Oh my gosh. I see his name all over the next door app all the time on this issue. Yep. So he's the one who's really stoking the flames on this as a vendetta because he lost that election. Wow. And so he's really trying to hold that over her and, and use it as an election issue when he runs again, right? Um, so, so that's what's happening there politically. Um, and so John Marriott is, they're tight and John is the, the vocal opposition on city council on this. Um, and then, um, the other two is the mayor, Mark Williams. Um, he has always said it should go to a vote. It should go to a vote. Um, and that's, you know, just in my opinion, a weak politician's response. Um, I can't make this decision. Let's put it to the voters. Um, and, um, sorry, I'm adding a little <laughs> color to this. <laughs> um, and, um, and then the, um, the other one is David Jones and, um, he's a, he's a tough read, but it's become clearer and clearer that John Marriott has got him in his camp. So 